this video, we're going to get an introduction to Ansible playbooks, but we're first going to start with a discussion on variables. So to go into a little bit more detail, variables in Ansible are used to account for differences between servers. By using variables, I'm going to have the ability to keep a nice layer of abstraction in my playbooks, and I can define my variables as I need to in various host bars or group bars files. And variables could be anything for things like facts or for file paths or for package versions. So when we talk about variables, I would be remiss if I did not bring up variable precedence. And basically what variable precedence is, it's the order in which the same variables are going to override each other. It's a hugely important concept in Ansible. And as of Ansible 2.0, in fact, there are 16 levels of variable precedence. And you can see from this slide right here that extra vars are always going to take precedence because they're number one. And then role defaults are going to get overwritten by all of these other var types. So I've highlighted a couple of the variables in the variable precedence slide here to show you that where we defined those variables in inventory a few slides ago is basically where these fall on the variable precedence chain. So we had defined host specific vars and group vars for all the hosts inside the inventory file specifically. And so you can see that everything except inventory vars and role defaults are going to override these. So that's why variable precedence is super important because you need to think about where you should define your variables in relation to what your playbook is actually doing. So if you have variables that you're defining inside of your play header of your playbook, those need to be somewhere inside the variable precedence chain that Ansible can access at runtime. If they're not, then it's going to fail. So it's very important to determine where the best place to define your variables is. Okay, so just to recap, so far, we have talked again about acting against inventory with modules, but those modules are going to be contained in things called tasks. And tasks are simple and declarative because we're basically just telling the module to do something specifically. So if you take a look at this slide here, I've got a few examples. We did an ad hoc demonstration where I said that I wanted to install Apache and that I wanted it to be present on the machine. So yum, a package should be installed. That's pretty straightforward. The other ones, it's the same kind of story. With the template module, we're rendering a configuration file from a template file. With file, we're making sure a directory should exist or we can create a symlink. These are the types of arguments that we're going to be passing to our modules and those are gonna be inside tasks. So example tasks in a play. Got a few examples on this slide. In our first example, we have named our task add cache dir. And it is best practice to name your tasks and to name them something appropriate to what you're actually doing in the task itself. So my task name add cache dir, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm using the file module. I'm passing it some arguments. In this case, I'm telling it that I want the cache directory path to be opt cache. And I'm setting the state to directory, which means that I'm actually going to create the directory opt cache. The second and third examples are fairly straightforward. Basically, just like we did with the ad hoc command demonstration, we are using the yum module to install a package, except in this case, I'm installing Nginx and I'm making sure that it's at latest. And then I'm going to use the service module to ensure that Nginx is both enabled and actually I'm gonna restart it in this case. I've set the state to restarted. So normal tasks, we've seen a couple examples of those. Those are going to run sequentially. But there's a special type of task called a handler task that actually only runs on notification. So handlers, they can be notified multiple times during a play, and they're only triggered when a task causes a change in state. So typically, you're going to see a change in state if you push out a configuration file for the first time, and that's normally where you're going to define handlers. These are only going to run once at the end of the play, regardless of how many times they've been triggered. So if I include a notify keyword to restart Apache, it's, and I do that for each task in my playbook, it's still only going to trigger one time. So an example handler in a play would look like the following. 
basically taken that exact same example from before and turned it into a handler. So I've installed Nginx with the YUM module, except I included a notify keyword at the end to restart Nginx. So if that task returns changed, so remember when we did the demonstration, we saw that it returned changed when something actually happened. If it returns changed, that's going to trigger the handler and that's going to restart Nginx at the end of the play. So add cache directory is gonna happen, then install Nginx, then maybe you have other tasks that are gonna happen, and then at the end, that's when the handler is going to trigger. So now that we've looked at some example tasks and some handler tasks, we should talk now about what those tasks are going to be contained inside of, which are plays and then consequently playbooks. So plays are ordered sets of tasks, and those are going to execute against a host selection from our inventory file. And a playbook is a file that contains one or more plays. So you can have one play or you can have more than one play, really up to you. So let's go into a little bit more detail. I have a playbook example here that is basically one play and I'm going to kind of walk through what each of the pieces represent. So to start off, we have our name field. And again, just like with task names, these are best practices. You should always name your plays, you should always name your tasks, and they should represent what's actually happening inside of your play. So in this case, my play name is called install and start Apache, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing. And I also have highlighted the task names as well. So both of these, all of these are human readable comments. Um, and again, best practices is that you should include them. So the next thing that we're doing is we have our host declaration inside of the play. I'm targeting the web group. So my web servers group in this case. And then I have a var section in my play. So I'm setting two variables here, HTTP port, I'm setting to 80. I'm setting my max client setting to 200. And if you think about variable precedence, so we're defining the vars right inside of the playbook. So just like the variable precedence chain, we, variables can be handled in several different ways. So this is directly in the playbook, but we also showed an example of variables defined inside of inventory you can define them as an extra var where you pass it at runtime. You can do it as an output from a previous play or you can do it via Ansible Tower. Then we have our connecting user information. So in this case, I'm setting my remote user to root. In the ad hoc command demonstrations that I did previously, I was connecting as the vagrant user. So it is definitely absolutely not required that you connect as the root user. But in this case, this is just the example that I'm using here. And like I showed before with my install Apache ad hoc command demonstration, we can actually connect as a user and escalate to root. And we have multiple privilege escalation methods, including sudo, su, power broker, and uh, other privilege escalation mechanisms as well. So now we're into our task section, which we talked a little bit about before. So these examples are a little bit different than the ones we showed, but basically our modules are gonna be in key value pairs. We have our yum module, which is going to be installing Apache. We're setting the package name to HTTPD. We're setting the state to latest, which means I'm getting the latest version of Apache that I can get from, from the repository where it's coming from. And you'll notice that I'm using the package alias instead of name here. So those are interchangeable. You can use either name equals HTTPD or package equals HTTPD. And then in our second task, we're writing the Apache config file. So for that, we're gonna use the template module where we have a, an HTTPD.j2, so the J2 extension, standing, which stands for Jinja2. And that's located on our control machine in the serve directory. And then we're going to put that, the destination directory is going to be equal to etsy httpd.conf. So it's gonna push out the file to the remote machine. And then our last task, we're gonna start Apache now that we've pushed out the configuration file. And we're going to start it with the service module. Name equals httpd, state equals started. 
So that concludes our overview on an introduction to playbooks. But what I want, want to do now is I actually want to transition over to my text editor of choice to actually write a basic playbook. So I have a site YAML file here, which is basically my name. You can name your playbook files whatever you want to, but I always call it site YAML because indicating that it's you know, the overall main site playbook. And so I'm going to start. I've got my three dashes here to start my playbook file. Those are optional, but I like to have them. It's comforting. You don't have to put them in if you don't want to, but just wanted to put that out there. So the first thing I'm going to do is name my play. And I'm going to install and start Apache. So now I have my host declaration line here. And I'm going to target my web servers group. So if I go over to my host file, you can see that I've got my web servers group over here. And it makes sense that I would target the web servers group if I'm going to install Apache. And then I'm going to put in my connecting user. And then I'm going to escalate to the root user once I connect to the machine. So this is that privilege escalation that I did in the ad hoc command, except now I'm doing it inside of a playbook. So now my play header is complete. I can move on to my task section. And again, name your task. So actually, before I install Apache, I do want to actually install um, the Apple repository. And I will also do that with the YUM module. So name equals Apple release, state equals present. So now I make sure that I've got that, that repo ready to go and enabled. And then my next task, I'm actually going to install a couple Python packages for SE Linux. So we're kind of we're kind of mixing up some things here. But I want to make sure that I have all of this because when we transition into a role, we're going to need each of these individual components. So this is kind of a good practice for that. So I'm going to set my name to a variable. Name equals item. And I'm going to set the state to present. And basically, the item is just a standard loop. Because I'm going to include a with items here. And then I'm going to say which packages I actually want to install. So I'm going to get lib sc linux python and lib sc manage python. And then we should be good. So that task will install each of these items in one task. So it saves me the trouble of actually having to write it out two separate times. The reason why I didn't include Apple in that is because I'm going to keep that separated out for later use. OK, so now we're on to our third task. So now I'm actually going to test to see if SE Linux is running now that I have installed it. And I'm going to use the command module to just issue a get enforce on the machine. And I'm going to register the output of that and call that SC status. And basically what the register is doing is it's just registering the return of this task into a, a new variable. And I'm naming that variable SC status. And then now I'm also going to set changed when to false. Because the command module is always going to return changed, even though nothing may have actually happened. So I want to change that to fall so that it'll actually just return OK. OK. So now I can move on to my next task, which should be the Apache pieces. So my name actually wasn't very appropriate for this particular playbook, because I'm actually installing way more than Apache. But say la vie. So install Apache. Use the yum module again. So just like I did with the ad hoc demonstration. And then now I'm going to start it 
with the service module. State equals started, enabled equals yes. Okay, so this is all fairly straightforward. I have the task to install the Apple repository. I'm getting some SE Linux Python packages. I'm testing to see if SE Linux is running, and then I'm installing and starting Apache. So I'm going to save this file, and then now I can actually go ahead and run it. So let me switch over to my terminal window here. Clear that out. And then if I list the contents and cat my site YAML, you can now see that I have the pieces of the task that I just put in there. So that's good. And so now I'm going to run the playbook. And to run a playbook, it's actually Ansible-playbook instead of just Ansible, which is what you would use for ad hoc. Still going to pass the host file, though. And now I just pass the playbook name. So real quick, before I run this, what's going to happen is, is it's going to execute those tasks that I specified in order from top to bottom. So it's going to first start by gathering facts, which happens implicitly. And then I'm going to go in order of the tasks that I wrote out. So first installing Apple, then the Python bindings for SE Linux, and so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and run this. So there's the setup. I'm going to install Apple. There's the change return. Install Python bindings for SE Linux, which should show an output for two packages because I did the standard loop with with items. Now I tested to see if SE Linux is running, which returned OK because I did changed when to false. Now I'm installing Apache, which again, it's taking a while because I already rolled this back previously. And then the start Apache also returned changed. So you can see here, I've got my play recap of OK6, change 4. And just like with an ad hoc command, that item potency principle will, will persist through to here. If I run this again, it should return OK for all six items, which it does. So that concludes our presentation on Introduction to Playbooks. Join us in our next video where we're going to talk about how to transition this basic playbook into a role.